you know, get you some rags, get it up as quick as, pop as possible, then get you okay. some paint thinner. Popple? Popple. Then get some paint thinner, um, pour on it. Paint thinner won't hurt the finish, um, but it will help get the paint off, but, you know, if it's a lot of it. Hi, I'm Ted Cook. This is my brother Jason. We're with reallycheapfloors.com, and this is our next installment of Answering Your Questions for a Podcast. Pretty excited this morning, Oh, Jason? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right, first one. Uh, a customer asked, I noticed that I can't buy the Florte Pro Series 5 or 6 anymore. Will you be getting more of those in stock soon? That is a good question. Um, to give you a little background on it, all of our LVP comes from Shaw. It's either under the Shaw, Shaw Florte or um, Cortec labels. Um, and based, based on lots of different things, we choose which ones that we're, which collections that we're going to commit to. Um, we've, we do have a little bit of the Series 6 on order right now. We're waiting on it to come in. We haven't ordered any Series 5. And I like the Series 5. I like it a lot. If any of our customers want to buy any 5 or 6, we still have programmed pricing. We get a truck every 5 to 7 days. So we can bring that material in for you and there won't be a, a, a big um, penalty in price. There shouldn't be any penalty. We should be able to be very competitive on those. So um, we, we, we don't plan on bringing it in stock to answer the question as he was asked, but we can get it any time. Very good. All right, next question is Jason's. When ordering a luxury vinyl plank, how much extra should I order to allow for waste? Okay, we recommend at least 5% waste factor. Because you're going to get some boards with gonna, knots in them? No. Um, you really don't get any waste in the LVP. It's all first quality. You know, we go across the room, board we cut, we go back and start with it. Where we get into our waste is when you get to the wall and you've got an inch to finish. So when I rip that board, which the board's seven or nine inches wide, you know, that six or eight inches that's left, it's waste. So you're talking about where you rip it against when the wall? When I'm ripping against the wall, you know, okay. if I've got just one big room, you know, my waste factor may only be 2%. Right. But if I'm doing a whole house, you know, you could get up as much as 10% waste. So hallways are going to have a lot more out. waste than living rooms. Yes. Okay, so it depends uh, on your application. So but should I, never run more than 7 or 8%. Should never run over, okay. over that. So. All right. Okay. All right. All right, this one's for you. Um, what is the difference between selecting better mill run and rustic grades in hardwood? Um, I want to know why, why did you get the easy question I get the hard one? I thought this one's pretty easy, but I'm just you? testing you. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> We've covered this a little bit in some of the earlier um, blogs and uh, podcasts, but wood is graded to increase the yield. Okay, if the, you can, you'll see one of, the, one of the, the grades mentioned was mill run. Mill run means when the manufacturer made it, they didn't grade it at all. Okay, so in theory, the boards would come down the line 16 feet long because that's what, when, when they saw, when they run wood through a saw, it's all 16 feet long. So they cut those boards up based on grade. Okay, so let's say that we have a 16 foot long board and eight foot in the middle of it's perfect. Well, they would cut out that eight foot because that board's selecting better, all right? It fits the parameters selecting better. That means it has very little color variation. That means it's not gonna have any open knot. It means it wouldn't have any wormholes. It's select, okay? Only about, if you include, there's another grade called clear. If you include clear and select and better, only about 20% of a tree is included in those grades. Not much, okay? So so they set that 20% over, and if they market it correctly, if they have a customer that buys the selecting better and or the clear, then they can do very well on that. If they don't have a customer for that, then sometimes it gets tossed back down to the next lower grade or sold as a mill run. So a company might run 100,000 feet, make it ungraded, they will cut everything down to eight feet because you can't get anything longer than that in a box. Um, and they'll sell it all as mill run. Mill run typically sells at a low price. 
So why would a company sell Mill Run? Because they don't have a market for those other grains and they want to move it. We see our hickory two and a quarter or maple two and a quarter a lot of times run in Mill Run um, just because the company that, we, that makes that for us does not offer that in the different grades like they do their three, four, and five. So that's what a Mill Run is. Um, rustic grade, again, as they separate these grades out, rustic is... Um, is an interesting grade. It's not a real common grade. Honestly, I made that grade up. Uh, one of our, our, our big suppliers has a product that they pull out before the wood is finished. Uh, a lot of the defects they make are not visible, not a lot, but some, some defects are not visible until after a wood is finished. But other defects like board length, wormhole, a uh, little bit bigger knot, more variation in color, though, we, we know those are there before the wood's finished. So what this company does is they pull those out before it's finished, they stack it against a wall, and then in, uh, they let us pick the colors that we want. So if I'm short on gun stock, I'll say, hey, send me a trailer load of um, rustic grade in the gun stock, okay? We can do that. So it, it makes it very easy for us, and it speeds these, uh, these skews that are a little bit slower moving for them, speeds those up. So that's the difference between selecting better, meal run, and rustic grains. All right, next one's for you. It says, oh no, I got paint on my hardwood floor. How do I remove it without harming my hardwood? We have to remove my hardwood, sorry. Uh, it's according to what, how much paint. You know, did I get a few drips on it? Um, if you get a few drips on it and just didn't know when it's dried, you can usually take maybe a spoon um, and just slightly scrape it. Mm -hmm. um, usually it'll come off. Um, now if it's something you walk through and you kick the bucket and spill a big pile of paint on your floor, a um, little different, you know, it's hard to get up because it goes down in the grains of wood. But if it did happen, I'd get it all up, you know, get you some rags, get it up as quick as, pop as possible, then get you okay. some paint thinner. Popple? Popple. Then get some paint thinner, um, pour on it. Paint thinner won't hurt the finish, um, but it will help get the paint off. But you know, if it's a lot of it, you probably wind up having to sand it. Or you could use steel wool and rub it a little bit. You're gonna see a change in gloss it's, level. Right, so that's why I say you still ain't gonna get it out right. if it goes down. You could change the, the wattage of the light bulb, go down to a lower wattage light bulb, light bulb yeah. then nobody'll know. Or just paint the whole floor and it'll match. Yeah, pour it out. You're such yeah. a smart person. I know. You just don't really show it in the camera. Um, all right, here's a long one. I'm going to paraphrase it. Uh, these folks want to put LVP over some really thin, probably a commercial carpet. It's probably glued down. You should see that a lot in rentals. So it's, it's, it's really flat. Can they install LVP over top of that carpet? It's not recommended. Um, they don't want you to put anything um, with a cushion, with too much cushion under an LVP. Um, especially on the carpet. Carpet, when you lay LVP over carpet, carpet crawls as you walk on it. Um, you don't notice it, but when you put something like the LVP over it and you walk across it, it's wanting to make that LVP move, mm -hmm. which will make it come apart. Right. So when you put, they, they engineer LVP to have a certain amount of cushion on the back of it. And if you go more than that, it allows movement. And the way LVP is milled, you know, to snap together, it has to be perfect. There's not room for more movement. Right. And in the flooring business, movement equals problems. Okay. So don't, one of the good things about when you got really thin carpet down like that, it comes up really, really easy. Grab one corner, go to pulling. Uh, I literally, I have taken up over a thousand square feet of that in 15 minutes before. Um, glue down carpets, it's wonderful. Even if it is hard to get up, you're better off getting it up than having problems right. later. Right, so can you do it? Yeah, yeah. but don't. Okay, here, uh, this one says, uh, my kids have really bad allergies with dust and pollen. If I get hardwood floors, should I worry about their allergies? Um, no, let's go back to what you said. Nobody's allergic to carpet. Nobody's allergic to vinyl. Nobody's allergic to hardwood floors. What they're allergic to is dust. Um, you know, if you go out and buy a $5,000 vacuum cleaner, carpet's fine with allergies. Uh, hardwood just happens to be easier to clean, happens to be, you know, easier to keep dust free. Uh, you can get hardwood or LVP, any of your hard surfaces, even roll good vinyl. Buy you a Swiffer or some kind of push-along 
um, dust mop and use it once a day. Run around, you'll be fine. Keep in mind, allergies are all about dust and allergens. They're about dog hair. So, you know, you're better off. Change the filters in your air conditioning system, okay? Wash your dog a little more frequently. Take, get rid of the allergens and the dust and the dog hair and you'll be fine. All right, Jason, since you're so smart, if my hardwood floor shows gaps between boards in the winter months, is it defective? No, it's actually pretty normal for wood to show gaps in winter months because um, summer times we have higher humidities, which is more moisture in the air. Um, and then in the winter months, we got drier airs. People are running, a lot of people use wood heat, which is really dry heat. So it's pretty normal to see a few gaps here and there in the winter months, and then they usually clo close back up in the summer months. I have heard that uh, when you're talking about wood heat being a dry heat, that um, LP gas, L, you know, if you use gas heat, that it puts back about a, what, three quarts of water for every gallon it, is, it burns? It is supposed to. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, when because we, it's a real dry heat too. Right, you know, when yeah. you go to grandma and grandpa's house when you're younger, they, uh, they had on the fireplace, they had a big pot of water. It's because it got so dry in the house, everything shrunk. And that's just, you know, getting cracks from your boards is right. just a seasonal movement. And a lot of times you see them around the vents before you yep. do anywhere else that's right. anyway. So. Here's a good one. What does a hardwood flooring, flooring warranty cover? Not much. Uh, and, you know, retailers are probably more to blame than manufacturers, but we, we always want big warranties because we're too lazy to sell a floor on its attributes. What we should be doing is explaining to customers which floors will wear better and not throw this big warranty out there that makes you think that's how long your floor is going to last. A warranty is meant to cover manufacturing defects. That's all it's meant to cover. And in the hardwood business, in the LVP business, if you're going to have a, a warranty issue, you're only going to need a warranty for probably 15 minutes after it comes out of the box. You know, does it go together for a click floor? Will it click? Is it, you know, for some reason it's not going together? That's a milling issue. That's a warranty issue. Take it back and get your money back or get some more material. With hardwood, you know, will it go together when it, when it goes together with a tongue groove? Is it lining up or is one piece a little higher than the other? That's a bad thing, okay? That's a warranty issue. Once a floor's installed, literally 99% of the problems you have after that are job site related, okay? It's moisture. It's, it's how you're treating it, you know, things like that. Um, you know, if you run through their baseball cleats, you know, don't call me and say, hey, I got a warranty issue. My floor's dead. Well, no kidding. You wore roller skates in the house. Um, you know, or tell me your floor is cupping and you don't turn on the air conditioner. I get out there and you've got the doors and windows open. Well, of course it's cupping. The relative humidity in here is 80%, okay? Will warranty cover that? Absolutely not. The manufacturer did nothing wrong when they made that floor that would make it cup or that would make it dent, okay? Now, denning is really more about how dense the wood is. And you can read some of our blogs or watch our videos about denning and about Jenka testing. There's, you know, the Jenka test tells us the density of woods, how they compare to another wood. So if, you know, if you, you really don't want your floor to dent, then don't buy a pine floor. Don't buy a soft maple floor. Buy a hickory floor. Buy a hand scrape floor, okay? Um, don't, don't count on the warranty covering things like denning and, and cupping. <clears throat> All right. Here's... Uh, Here's one, does radiant heat hurt a luxury vinyl floor over time? No, um, it shouldn't. I mean, it's designed to go over radiant heat. Um, luxury vinyl plank probably um, expands and contracts less than anything out there on yeah. the market. So it's probably one of your better floors to put over a radiant heat floor. Um, you know, and it, and it holds heat well. Mm -hmm. It probably holds heat better than wood. Uh, not 100% sure on that. What do you think? Well, wood certainly is porous. Right. So it's, it, of course, it ins wood insulates better, but I don't right. think it holds heat it very probably well. Holds it heat. takes mass. Right. So that's why I stay warmer than you do, because right. I have more mass. So, a lot more mass. So, yes, vinyl plank is a good floor over radiant heat. Maybe my big mass wasn't a good analogy. Maybe not. Okay. A lot of people don't recommend getting hardwood floors for their bathroom, but the rest of my house has hardwood floors, so it'd be worth my money and time for a matching hardwood floor in the bathroom. First of all, throw that matching stuff out. You're not gonna match it. If you had material from the same batch 
in the same boxes. You pull it out five years later, it's going to be a different color. That's because wood patinas over time. Okay, you can lay wood down. It will get closer over time, but it's always going to be a slightly different color. Tough break. Um, but as far as putting wood in bathrooms, I'm probably the wrong one to, like, to ask. I love continuity. Okay, if I've got hardwood in the rest of the house, you can bet I'm going to run it through the bathroom as well. Uh, just run it. But that, it just comes down to personal preference. Um, unless you're really throwing the water out. You know, if you've got a two-year-old throwing water everywhere, you probably need some sheet vinyl or, or uh, click LVP. Yeah. Other than that, stick your hardwood in there and be happy with it. Okay, let's see. Here you go, Jason. Here's an easy one for you. I want to stain my wood by myself. How do I stain my wood? Do I need a mask and gloves before I start staining my wood? Mm. How do you stain it? All right, after your wood's installed, you sand it and finish and everything, got it cleaned up. Um, the best way in my experience is rags. Um, get you one rag um, and do about a two foot strip from one end to the other. Wipe the stain on as even as possible, but then you need to come right, right back behind it and wipe off the excess. Excess or excess? excess. You meant to say excess. I meant to say excess. Yeah, but wipe all the excess off. Um, do you need a mask or gloves? Um, I would recommend gloves because the stain uh, pretty hard to get off um, and the mask is just a preference whether you want to smell it or not. I never did, but that's you, why you I always like the smell, but that explains a lot. That explains some of my mispronunciations, doesn't it? Right. Yep. Yeah, you almost mispronounced mispronunciation. Oh, my <laughs> that would have been ironic. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, here's another one since you're on roll. I need to finish my hardwood floors before my folks come in this Thanksgiving. What's the cheapest way to refinish my hardwood floors? Do it yourself. Um, what would be the uh, likelihood of it coming out looking bad if you finished it yourself? 90% uh, chance it probably wouldn't turn out right. Um, <laughs> a lot of times now you can replace the wood cheaper than you can have it refinished. And you can it's easier to do it yourself. Right. Tear the wood out. Um, but if it's just a four you want done, I would call a professional. I'd call a professional in and get him to do it. Um, but you know what? It is your folks that's coming your and you're folks. trying to impress them. So maybe they could put a click LVP over the top of it. You Parents could. walk in like, hey, I've got a new floor. Oh, yeah. That and they'd be, be impressed because if you try to finish it, refinish it, and it doesn't come out looking too good, the parents are going to be a little disappointed in you. Plus, if you got all the family coming over Thanksgiving, you're going to have the smell of the finish throughout the house for many days anyway. But it might cover up other smells you got yeah, in the house. So it really maybe. depends on your application. Right. Okay. That was a good answer, Jason. Thanks. Nice job. You did that well. Okay. Um, do hardwood floors make your house feel colder? Uh, then what? Then what? You know, if you're comparing it to carpet, certainly um, they do. Uh, it's just because, you know, they're are hard and, and you get more contact with your foot. Uh, and that's why a lot of people like to use rugs. You know, use rugs right beside the bed where your feet fall off. Um, you can always put on socks. If you don't have some, you can have some of my old ones, you know. That's right. Um, but to answer your question, do they make it feel colder? I would have to say yes. All right, what does RH mean in hardwood flooring? Should I worry about it? RH stands for relative humidity, okay? And there is no relative humidity in hardwood. Relative humidity is in the air. Um, what we measure in flooring is not necessarily relative hard, relative humidity, but how much moisture is in that wood. And is it is extremely important. Um, so we have two different times that we want to measure humidity. The first is before the wood goes down. We want to know the, sorry, we want to know the relative humidity in the room. We want to know the amount of moisture in the subfloor. And we want to know the amount of moisture of the hardwood that's being installed. EPA says that relative humidity in the house should run between 40 and 60 percent ongoing. In a construction site, that's really hard to do because you don't have air conditioning. You don't have the means of covering that. So really, that isn't as important as the amount of moisture in your subflooring. We take a moisture meter, which no hardwood flooring job or no, no nail down job certainly should ever be attempted without a moisture meter. But you, whether you're using a pin meter that goes into the wood or a contact meter, it will tell you what the relative, what the percentage of moisture is in that subfloor. Um, we want it to be under 15, preferably under 13, but we want it to be higher than six. Uh, we also want it to be within 
no more than 4% of what your hardwood flooring is, okay? So if you check the, the hardwood flooring and it comes in at about 8%, then we don't want our subfloor to be over 12. If one of them's off, we have to say, well, which one of these is wrong? Because if we have a, if say we have 15 in our hardwood and we have wood that's at eight, we stack that wood up and we let it acclimate, that wood's going to expand. We really don't want that wood expanding because it's milled at a certain moisture level. It's milled to be perfect. It's milled to go together. And when you, this, this might be getting a little technical, stop me if I'm getting too boring. Okay. But the grain changes directions in wood. Some of them run vertical or, uh, What's that called? Rift, quarter song. Quarter song. Where others are flat song and they're flat. And that's typically when your grain has the wider grooves in it. Um, and a, a, those boards expand along the grain. So if we take a flat song and a quarter song board and we introduce moisture to both of them, one's going to grow this way, the other's going to grow this way. That means when we nail them together, even if they fit, we're still going to have a half difference between the boards. So we don't want to introduce much moisture to our floors. A couple of percent is fine. We would never, ever want to introduce more than 4%. Harder the wood, like a hickory, the more that could be a problem because there's more room for it to move. Um, but anyway, that, yes, the, the amount of moisture in your subfloor, in your wood, and your room is, is important. After you install it, you still need to keep an eye on that relative humidity. You know, if, if uh, one spring is wet but cool and you want to open up the doors and windows, if our relative humidity gets much over 60, 70%, we're going to introduce moisture to that floor and we're going to see some expansion and you're going to see cupping in a floor, which can be disastrous, okay? Most of the time when a floor cups, it doesn't ever lay back down completely. So if you start to see some cupping in your floor, turn the air on, close the doors and windows. Deal with that moisture then, not later, okay? Yeah. Anything you'd like to add to that? No, you did fine. That's pretty good, wasn't it? That's good. Yeah, I studied like a, an hour for that. Okay, uh, here's one for you. How do I fix separations on my hardwood floor? Um, you can't fix separations in your hardwood floor. Um, usually this happens in the winter months, drier air times. Um, but if it's separated and it doesn't close back up in the summer, you can go to your local hardware. They make hundreds of different colors of color putty. Minwax wax wood is real putty. good. Don't they yeah. make a bunch of them? Yeah. They do. But uh, find you some wood putty that matches your wood real good. Um, just put it in there, wipe it off with a paper towel, um, and most people never notice it. The only one that usually notices is the one that did it. That's, yep. that's good. Okay, here's your one. My wife got home one day and noticed a hump or bump on our hardwood flooring. What is that, and how do we fix that? How the heck would I know? I've never been to their house. I don't know. You right. ever had the hump or bump? If you get a bump raised spot in your floor, chant, well, one thing we know is caused by movement, all right? Something moved, not exactly brain surgery. Something moved. What caused it to move? Most of the time, it's caused by moisture, okay? Sometimes, the, maybe you have a crawl space on the house or a basement that's excessively wet, and I have seen it maybe where one half of the basement has heat and air in it, the other half does not. Maybe it's a crawl space, got a dirt floor, and it has much higher humidity on that side than it does the side that, that's temperately controlled. And you'll see movement on where they join together, or maybe, you know, creaking over here. Creaking is another sign. If you're walking across a floor and you hear it squeaking or creaking, that's movement. All right, something got loose. Something expanded when it was wet, it laid back down when it was dry, and now you've got movement. So whether it's a hump coming up or squeaking, it's caused by movement. We need to stop the movement. Right. But it's almost impossible to stop the movement until we stop what caused the movement. So, you know, it, if we're talking about floors, probably your problem's underneath the, the house. Now, if it's a real, uh, small area, maybe you've got a leak in a dishwasher or a leak in an ice maker, you know, check that first. But if it's not nearing one of those, then you, you're probably getting some excessive moisture from underneath. Look, is there plastic in your crawl space? Is your basement too wet? You know, maybe you want to buy a, hygro a hygrometer. Sorry, I almost mispronounced hygrometer. You can buy a hygrometer for $10 at, at, a, at a box store. Stick one down there. Check your relative humidity. If relative humidity is over 60, 65%, that's probably what's causing that hump, and you need to get that moisture level down, 
then let's wait, let's let it dry down, and then let's fix the hump. And it could be a small moisture problem because, I mean, your moisture could be high through the whole floor, but mm -hmm. it just found that one weak right. spot. Right, it only manifest, it. manifests itself it where it wasn't screwed down. the weakest spot in the floor to right. do it, so it's something I would have a moisture measure, somebody with a moisture measure check it as soon as possible. Yeah, get, check it, yeah. Get, get your hygrometer, then a moisture meter. Have to have a moisture meter to fix it, hygrometer yeah. to find out what it is. Okay, which one are we on? All right, here you go. Are all your products made in the USA? Man, I wish they were. I really do. Um, I would like to have all of our products made in the USA. Unfortunately, there's very little LVP made in the United States. Now, all of our hardwood floor is made in the United States. Occasionally, we'll buy out a big warehouse and we'll get a lot or two of something that we didn't know about. You know, when you're buying 20 tractor trailer loads of stuff, they don't tell us where every box is made. But as a general rule, all of our hardwood is made in the United States. LVP will be imported from China, some from Vietnam. Um, we're working on getting that uh, fixed. Shaw is getting ready to open a plant. It's kind of top secret, don't tell anybody. Shaw's getting ready to open a plant that's gonna be making a lot of LVP down in Ringgold, Georgia. Uh, but it falls back on the tariffs. You know, the tariffs are about a quarter, a foot from the average product and a quarter makes a big difference in manufacturing. So if the tariff stay in place, then maybe Shaw can compete. If the tariffs fall off, maybe they can't. You're gonna see even less LVP made in the United States. That's a question we'll deal with more in the next couple of weeks as, as uh, now that the election's passed and we see what's gonna go on as well as how soon Shaw gets that plan up. Um, here's a question, interesting one. said, I heard you mention gloss levels in an earlier podcast. One, that means somebody actually watched one of my podcasts. Right. Yeah! Uh, what is a gloss level, and are there different kinds of gloss levels? Yes, there are basically three gloss levels. One is a matte finish, which has no sheen at all. It's like a 10% gloss level, uh, which is getting very popular. A lot mm -hmm. of people are liking yeah. that. It, it shows less than anything, you know, less dust wear. or whatever, right. plus wear. Um, your next gloss level we call a semi-gloss, which is the most common. Um, Forty to fifty percent gloss. Forty, yeah, and there's probably eighty percent of the materials made with that. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is high gloss. High gloss looks like a mirror finish. Like seventy percent gloss. Yes, magnifies everything. You know. Um, I take it you're not a big fan. Most people are not big fans. It looks really good after it's first done. Uh, a year later, they're like, you know, these scratches on high gloss. You do really realize I still have to sell this stuff. You do. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people still love it, but it does show everything a lot more. It's more popular on two and a quarter inch stuff than it is wider yes. boards. So that is the difference. That is the difference in the three gloss levels. Pretty easy to tell in our product line which ones have the different gloss. Our glo the glossy product, we call it glossy. Uh, and then the only one we really sell that's a matte finish right now is what our Chateau. Our Chateau has a 10%. I love it. I love low gloss. But we've had customers get it and install it and say, hey, this finish, this uh, wood ain't got no finish on it. Well, it has the same amount of finish as the rest of them, just the sheen of it. But you are seeing more products come out with this yes. lotion. Yes. All right, that's all the time we have for today. We appreciate you joining us. If you have any questions we haven't covered, Hey, email us your questions and uh, or email him the questions and uh, we'll put them on our next podcast. Have a great day.